There's a word that's always lived in my head rent-free. Ever since I got into cartoon critique at a younger age than I probably should have. It seems reasonable at first, but it's really a load of crap when you break it down and think of examples of the word. It starts with an F. <laughs> Filler! So, what exactly is the goal of today's video? To destigmatize the word? Eh, not necessarily. I mean rather to destigmatize the cartoon episodes associated unjustly with the word. Now, if you're alive in the year of our Lord 2023, and you've liked a show that's been on the air in the last... 20 years, you've probably heard someone, either on the Triple W or in the flesh, use the term filler as a means of critique for a show or movie. If you don't know what filler in this case is, or if you think I'm talking about the stuff that goes into a pack of Twinkies, let me clarify. Actually, let's herb dick it. Wow, that wasn't helpful. This definition wasn't what I was looking for, nor this one, nor this one. Ew, gross. Well, for once, Herb Dick failed us. Let's see what else there is on the internet to help us define filler. Oh, thank you, TV tropes. Filler episodes are entries in a generally continuous serial that are unrelated to the main plot, don't significantly alter the relations between the characters, and generally serve only to take up space. Now, does this sound familiar in the slightest? I bet it does. You think you have an example of a filler episode, right? Well, I'm here to tell you, whatever the example you have in mind is, it's probably not actually a filler episode. As we speak, you're probably either commenting how it's literally a filler episode, or deleting the comment you made a few seconds ago about the example you just thought of. But yeah, actually, can we make that a law? Don't comment before you finish watching. The guy in the video could have something valuable to say that you didn't think they would at first. All things considered, I'm probably not that guy. But on that note, pull up a chair and let me explain. If you've touched grass in the last year, Oh no, the grass is dead. You've probably moved on from using the term filler lightly when referring to a show. The word is abused, and at this point in time, misunderstood. The definition TV Tropes provided us with claims that filler episodes are only somewhere in the middle of an ongoing story to take up space. This term felt more useful and somewhat identifiable back in the days of Steven Universe and Gravity Falls. One week, there could be an episode with a brand new, plot-heavy, domineering villain introduced, or a lot of lore is thrown at us. Another week, we might just see the characters hit the pool or swap bodies or something that doesn't serve as much of a purpose to the overall story. It's really easy to categorize these episodes as filler episodes, just because they probably wouldn't have to be mentioned in a more simplified recap of the show. But just because that's easy to do doesn't make it right. Nevertheless, people liked the easy path as it was. It was easy! With a lot of great story cartoons coming from Disney and Cartoon Network in the 2010s, as well as social media becoming a dominant force in the day-to-day -day life of the average Josh, so too came an audience who would review and discuss these cartoons publicly. This inevitably led to names being given to tropes, character archetypes, plot devices, and so on. All this terminology was relatively new in the realm of western animation, so this leads me to believe that people were still figuring out how to use them properly. Filler may have been a really useful word back in the early to mid 2010s, but in the age of Amphibia and Owl House, and especially in a world where those shows have wrapped up rather quickly, I would argue that the term when regarding a show is outdated. Put yourself in this scenario. You want to get your friend into a show you really like. They're on board with it, but they ask you which episodes are just filler episodes. They want you to give them a special guide of which episodes are essential episodes and which are filler episodes. Sound familiar, or at least realistic? Well, I'm here to say, very rarely, or maybe even never, is a filler episode possible. Okay, I don't mean to make a subsection of a subsection, just pull up another chair and let me explain. When I think of filler, I don't think of just literally anything that doesn't actively progress the overarching story of a show at all times. What comes to mind instead is elements or scenes from one specific episode that are transparently only there to artificially extend that specific episode. Whether it's an 11 minute show, or a 22 minute show, or a special extended episode of an 11 minute show, or a 22 minute show, the writers have that much time to knock us off our feet. They write episodes this long for a living, so they ought to know how to fill that exact time slot in a meaningful way. Filler is used when they can't do so. If you don't know what I mean, here's an example. In the terrible Family Guy episode Seahorse Seashell Party, there are two separate scenes that take up way more time than they should have. One where Peter just says, how about you all just sit there while I make random dad noises, and then makes random dad noises for 44 seconds straight. Then another where he hums to the Indiana Jones soundtrack in an intentionally annoying fashion for 55 seconds. These time wasters collectively take up nearly 2 minutes of runtime, 
And that's honestly just the tip of the iceberg. This episode sucks. But do you know what I mean? This is filler. There are also generally a lot of Family Guy episodes where there are so many pointless, stupid cutaways that they actually take up the better part of the episode. They diverge that much from the main story. Maybe the writers actually do have more of a desire to create more of a variety show than a sitcom, but it was billed as a sitcom nonetheless, so I say it's crap. This is filler. Remember Spongebob's pathetic 10th anniversary special? If you don't, there was a dump truck load of cheap cameos from celebrities that no kids would recognize, and pointless flashbacks that have nothing to do with the characters getting stuck in the vents. This is filler. People may see filler as anything that doesn't consistently further the main plot, but it really depends on what's actually going on in an episode. You might be thinking, but Theo, Spongebob and Family Guy aren't story-driven shows. Yeah, they're not. But if this is what it takes to give a more accurate definition of filler, then so be it. Filler to me is parts of an episode that do nothing more than fill the episode, with borderline worthless content that adds no substance whatsoever, yet somehow someone got paid to animate it. There are episodes of cartoons that you won't really miss anything important by skipping, but are they filled to the brim with content that amounts to literally nothing? Aha! Check! If you apply my definition of filler to most modern cartoons, you realize how rarely filler actually happens. If the writing of an episode at least functions as a cohesive story without any artificial extensions, it's not filler in my eyes. Hopefully you see where I'm going at this point, but let me talk about a Gravity Falls episode that generally isn't very well liked. Season 2, Episode 16, Roadside Attraction. The entire episode is about Dipper trying to move on from his hot coworker who's too old for him anyway, which hadn't come up for several episodes. And then it introduces Candy having a crush on Dipper? And it never comes up again after this episode? It's already a really weird episode, but the jarring thing is, it's one of the final five of the entire show. There had been tons of plot-heavy episodes at this point in the show, one after the next, and this arbitrary road trip episode completely ignores all of that just to present a side story that adds nothing to the ongoing story. This is the kind of episode that people will attribute the term filler to. I beg to differ though. Yes, this episode feels very out of place and could have happened just about anywhere else in the show. But does the episode at least tell a story that fills the 22 minute runtime? Not an especially good one, but yes it does. They say filler episodes only exist to take up space and Roadside Attraction really seems like it only exists to take up space. But I wouldn't call it filler. At least it has a story. Really, it's the sandwiching between story-driven episodes that ruins the reputations of optional episodes like it. Bad example? Think back to Amphibia. People complain about the filler in Season 1, or the filler in Season 3. Honestly, that's bullcrap. Amphibia takes most of its first season just to get you to care about its characters with some fun mundane adventures. You don't really need to see absolutely all of them to still enjoy the other seasons, but I still found them pretty entertaining. That's not all though. They'll still do the job of endearing you to the cast, a lot of one-time characters from this season come back later, and there are many little story beats that won't seem important at first but turn out that way. Newsflash, not all of Amphibia Season 1 is optional. If you only watch the first two episodes of the mid-season finale and the last episode, you will miss stuff and the conclusion of Ant's character arc will not seem effective. You have to sit through at least most of the season because it serves a purpose and is worth getting through for seasons 2 and 3. And I find most of season 1's one-offs to at least be entertaining. So yeah, not filler. People complain about filler in season 1 because they were waiting for things to really get going. So what was the problem with the third and final season? Well, things had already gotten going by the end of season 2. But now that Anne and the Plantis were stuck on Earth, the audience was waiting for things to get going again. It felt like they had just forgotten about all the traumatic events that happened in the Season 2 finale, even though they hadn't, and Disney was just holding the writers hostage about mentioning a certain stabbed teenager. So it left the audience screaming, STOP DRIVING FOOD TRUCKS THROUGH SKATE PARKS, YOUR BEST FRIEND IS PROBABLY DEAD! Some people even had a similar problem when they returned to Amphibia. Why am I sitting through a Midsummer parody when we could be looking into convoluted backstories? Are these army recruits really gonna batter in the end? But I wouldn't call any of it filler, because the way the characters in Amphibia spend Season 3 did actually push the story forward and serve a purpose in its own, less apparent way. If you're complaining about the filler in Season 3, just be grateful that Earth and the Wartwood Resistance were established at all for the sake of the final episodes. Season 2 is different though. It's stuck between Seasons 1 and 3, so that's where the plot is actually most notably in motion. 
It's the best of both worlds, because we get to see all the rest of Amphibia, while unearthing a lot of lore and character insights in the process. It makes sense why it's frustrating when a show takes a break from all the action, because it's seasons like Season 2 that display just how good a show gets when it doesn't slow down. But this is what makes it so easy to assign the negative label of filler to slower paced episodes afterward. But not every episode can be a bombshell of lore and heartbreak. Skippable episodes are inevitable, even in Season 2. If every episode was a bombshell of lore and heartbreak, none of them would be. It's what makes big episodes like True Colors stand out as big moments in the show's history. Hey, you know why Matt Brawley hates the word filler as much as I do? It's because of unwarranted association with episodes that really shouldn't be glossed over. There may be an episode about snails being cute buried in the middle of the temple arc, but that episode has a really nice, literally reflective moment for Anne's character. It's pretty important and valuable if you think about it. Besides, it's the episode where she gets the iconic breastplate anyway. Most episodes that aren't necessarily essential still feature some kind of character growth. We may have taken some time off in Season 3 to celebrate Spig's birthday, but did Anne at least learn a lesson by the end? Sure, her Sasha was showing. And if you still need another example, Owl House. Everyone praises the Owl House's second season for how it's devoid of filler. I know what you guys mean, but I think you know what my rebuttal's gonna be. The show's final season was cut short. The crew basically had to rewrite all of season 2 just to pull everything together. There wasn't a moment to waste, a freaking course there were no skippable episodes. Season 2 of The Owl House is the only show I've ever seen that felt like it was actively trying not to take any breathers. Of course it kept audiences on the edge of their seats, and of course people are going to praise it for that. But season 2 would have had more non-essential episodes if season 3 wasn't cut. I don't really think that'd be a bad thing though. If I do have any flaws with season 2, it would mostly be pacing problems that can't really be helped. Not even so much that the season feels rushed, just that it feels like there isn't much time to breathe. Not even a problem with any one specific episode if you ask me, but oh well. And sure, season 1 has some non-essential episodes, but that was before they knew the show would be cancelled prematurely and... You know what, I'm sick of elaborating. People say that just because something is filler doesn't make it bad, but the term is misunderstood and misused. This is filler, not this. You don't need a filler guide for your cereals, here's your cheat sheet. If you're enjoying an episode, no need to skip it, why would you? You're enjoying it, right? If not, skip to anything you know is going to be plot relevant and then move right on to the next. Filler is a term with a negative connotation and in theory, it should have been long enough by now where we know we're misusing it. I'm in favor of retiring the word from the discussion of western cartoons altogether, unless it's absolutely necessary to use. That is to say, only if the content of an episode is there for any artificial extension. Not character growth, not something that'll come back later, not reveals, not foreshadowing, nothing but a whole lot of nothing. Even the body swap episode from the Owl House, as much of a done to death nothing burger as that episode is, I wouldn't call it filler. Because at the end of the day, it does tell a story, not a good one, but it at least fills the runtime with actual content, not reliant on cutaways or noises that go on for minutes at a time. If a story can't make the 22 minute mark, or 11 minute, whatever it is, without any of that, then that's just a failure in the writer's room. And would you really go as far as to call these writers failures? I don't mean to be all politically correct, but I would prefer that instead of referring to such episodes as filler episodes, we instead just call them skippable episodes, optional episodes, or non-essential episodes. Writers and artists deserve better. And if you'd still rather go around just using the word filler after I took 14 minutes out of your day to tell you why not to, I just want you to know, I'm not listening. Quit chilling. Ah! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we both, it's quit chilly, are you admit? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> it is. I just saw the Mario movie in a suit and I liked it. See it if you want. What did you think, Nick? It was pretty good. Yeah, was it worth the trip? Yeah. Was it worth the drip? Yeah. I need to see that wall there.